last, it's Sarah Milliken. T4's finest, it's Nick Grimshaw. And their team captain, John Richardson. And facing them tonight, made in Chelsea, it's Ollie Locke. This could get hairy, it's Joe Wilkinson. And their team captain, Sean Locke. Now, welcome your host, Jimmy. Welcome to 8 out of 10 Cats, a show about opinion polls, surveys and statistics. Did you know, for example, 31% of men say they have a bucket list of things to do before they die. Number one, find out where that smoke's coming from. 12% <laughs> of British people have a friend with benefits. I've got a friend with benefits. She's on benefits. <laughs> And 27% of people believe in reincarnation. My uncle died and came back as a woman. I say died, he went to Thailand. <laughs> right, let's get started. <laughs> what are you talking about? That's the name of our first round. It's our panellist's job to guess the British public's top three most popular talking points. Sean Steen, what do you think the nation have been talking about this week? Is it the trial of uh, Michael Jackson's doctor? <laughs> Dr Murray is accused of, uh, of being responsible for, for Michael Jackson's death, which is odd, really, considering that Michael Jackson, apparently, in his house, he had four gallons, four gallons of anaesthetic <laughs> stored in his house, of serious, you know, like, medical anaesthetic, which is probably enough to put Louis Spence to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> They're just trying to work out whether he killed him. And I was thinking, I can't think of a time in the last few years when, when Michael Jackson was alive and people went, oh, it's Michael Jackson, he looks well. Yeah. <laughs> 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 to be fair, to be fair, though, he hasn't looked himself since 1984. <laughs> How do you tell a man he's ill when you go, you're right, Michael, you're looking a bit pale? He goes, thank you. <laughs> Well, I was thinking, before he died, his whole life must have flashed before his eyes. And his last thoughts must be, who's that little black kid singing my song? He'd <laughs> 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 get the doctor was getting paid 100 grand a week, though, wouldn't he? Yeah. For, for, yeah, and I was thinking, Michael Jackson's a weirdo, isn't he, right? So, if Michael Jackson was paying me 100 grand a week, I'd, I'd inject him with Harry Bow if he asked me to. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. But if he's getting that much, <laughs> <laughs> if he was getting that much, surely there'd be an incentive to keep him alive. Yeah. Well, he does go on a bit, though, doesn't he? <laughs> <laughs> People suspect foul play. The family suspect foul play, and it, it just, you know. Well, there was a delay, wasn't there, in resuscitation, giving him the kiss of life, because they had to. It took them ages to find an eight-year-old paramedic. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I suppose that's it, because that, you have to hold the nose while you, while you breathe into the mouth, don't you? So, yeah. that, obviously, you don't want... Right, okay, well... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Easy. Let's have a look and see whether the trial of Michael Jackson's doctor is one of the most talked-about things this week. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the long-awaited trial of Michael Jackson's doctor started this week. Make no mistake, Jackson's name is going to be dragged through the mud at this trial, but when all is said and done, Michael Jackson will remain my absolute favourite. Self-mutilating, mentally unstable, virtually bankrupt, suspected paedophile junkie of all time. <laughs> <laughs> OK, John Steen, what do you think the nation should be talking about this week? The Eurozone bailout. The Eurozone bailout has been in the news a lot. Yeah, I've been trying to sort of simplify it in my head, and the way I've worked it out is the cold countries are bailing out the hot countries. That's basically it. <laughs> That's isn't exactly it. it. <laughs> I've not made that point before. <laughs> I feel sorry for Greece now. There must be a Greek finance minister whose job now must just... He's just He's given got flippers. up. He's flippers. Sure. <laughs> He's just adding up. It'd be like you, when a, a relationship is clearly going to end and you know you're going to get dumped, so you just spend all your time 
doing things to prepare for being on your own. Like if you said to the Greek finance minister, what's your sort of average day now? He's going, well, I have a tub of haagen for breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> but you spend the rest of the morning watching YouTube videos of cats and dogs sleeping on each other. <laughs> <laughs> Send an email at lunchtime, is it fixed? No, and then just cry and no, sleep. Just, just think about that nobody but you ever prepares for being alone. <laughs> Yeah, I've been preparing for it my whole damn life. <laughs> it's Greece's sure fault. It's Greece's fault. It's their fault they're in the situation. They borrowed too much money. And what do they produce? They produce flip-flops and ouzo. <laughs> so it's a drink nobody wants. Nobody wants ouzo. If somebody comes back from Greece, then nobody brings a bottle of ouzo, unless you've got slugs in your garden. <laughs> Even Sean Ryder won't drink it. <laughs> That's that disgusting. Bad. Who drinks something that sounds like a plasterer's nickname? <laughs> <laughs> Oi, Uzo! <laughs> and also, they smash all the plates at the end of the meal. No wonder they're bankrupt. <laughs> what, they... <laughs> what they need, what the bloody Greeks say, they need some fairy liquid and do some washing up. <laughs> Gerald, what do you make of the, uh, the Greek? Well, apparently the world's on its, you know, world's economy, if it carries on this way, it's going to be on its arse. But I think it might, it might, you know, might have to end up sort of doing bartering again, you know, mm. like, I'll swap you 40 carrots for an iPod shuffle. Yeah. <laughs> Done. Cool. <laughs> All right, I'll do that, actually. Yeah, done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, do it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love carrots. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's that bad. I think people are a lot of doom-mongering. I think all Greece have to do is go bankrupt, just like a business. If you go bankrupt as a business, you just go bankrupt. They just write, write off your debts and you just, you just launch the business again under a different name. So they just come back with a new name. What would you like call them? Pedalosia. <laughs> Pumastan. <laughs> <laughs> what about if it's Greece? What about lard? Too hot. Too hot for lard. Could call it lube. <laughs> lube. Welcome to lube. <laughs> Immigration, presumably, would be quite easy. <laughs> Slide straight <laughs> through. <laughs> Let's have a look and see whether the Eurozone bailout is one of the most talked about things this week. <laughs> yes, indeed, world leaders are struggling to solve the Eurozone crisis. What's basically happened is the Greek economy has come acropolis. <laughs> <laughs> OK, fingers on buzzers, one more thing to get. Is it the, uh, the riveting uh, Labour Party conference? <laughs> I know that's what's been kept me. Stuck in the house with the curtains closed. <laughs> Can't take my eyes off that jamboree of <laughs> laughs and uh, uh, yeah, it's just been brilliant. What was your if you had to narrow down like a one favourite moment from the Labour Party conference, Sean? Or it's maybe the bit. Uh, I tape it. I tape it. And watch it. Watch it back again. <laughs> and I've got on replay Ed Miliband's mouth going. <laughs> it does something. It's weirder than Rio Ferdinand's mouth. It's like his mouth's doing so some kind of break dance move. <laughs> He says something like, um, prosperity, and his mouth goes, well, yeah. <laughs> okay, let's have a look at him, let's have a look at him. <laughs> do you think he would benefit from your kind of... Because people think he's boring. Do you think maybe if he didn't do his shirt up properly, grew his hair out? Is it, this, pro this is properly done. It's, it's fashion. Well, if you want to catch <laughs> your death, it is. <laughs> <laughs> That's a very old thing to it, say. Catch when, your death. Sean. John was going to do that, but someone told him to put a T-shirt. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know how it was? Because it was down to there, and then someone, a member of production team. Careful, said, ladies. No. Careful. <laughs> Chicks, oh, dig just... a t shirt, Ollie. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Chicks like a man who's warm. <laughs> have you ever been lower than that? Have I ever? Yes. Yeah? <laughs> yes, I have. Yeah, wow. I got it. <laughs> I didn't mean that, I meant this show. It pays to advertise. I think I am showing quite a lot. I look like you didn't get that waxed for nothing. You look like what, sorry? Jordan. <laughs> kind of with sight. <laughs> you I look a bit a like Jordan, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you look like someone for whom the gender reassignment has gone brilliantly. <laughs> uh, Joe, what would you make of the Labour Party conference? <laughs> didn't like it. <laughs> Say, it's just speeches. <laughs> For a week. I can't just do stuff. 
No, not for me. <laughs> you do it for a week, do a speech, and then do something else. Like have a bit of cabaret, sword swallow. <laughs> well, like, like a wedding, like, you know, there's speeches, yeah, yeah. but then there's a buffet well, and there's I'd some dancing. Yeah, or well, maybe make it like a fate. You know, win a goldfish, whack a rat, donkey dog. <laughs> you go to Ed Miliband, he's trying to get a coat hanger round exactly, the thing. Yeah. A... <laughs> you idiot, go off. <laughs> it's, uh, it's in Liverpool, Ollie. Have you been to Liverpool? You spent much time I have. Liverpool? Well, I've been there once. You've been there once. Did you like it? I, I loved it. Did you? What did you love about it? Yeah. Um... <laughs> it was... <laughs> There's people there wearing more fake tan than you? <laughs> no, 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 no. Never that. No, no, no. No, that's rare. That's rare. <laughs> um, anyway. <laughs> I'm just going to assume, until further notice, that politicians don't like crime. So you don't need to get up at the conference and go, at Labour, we want crime to go down. <laughs> <laughs> kind of assume that. I would listen more to a politician if one stood up and went, I've got this yeah, weird idea that if I let crime go up a bit, police will get better at solving it. <laughs> <laughs> at least then you go, ooh, that's all right, all yeah. right, I'm going to vote for you. And then they try and do jokes. His opening joke was about, I don't know if you know, but last year I had a deviated septum. <laughs> At no point should you try and win people over with the phrase deviated sex. <laughs> Next year, he's going to clutch in at straws and go, this year, bit of trouble with the poo pipe. <laughs> I had to go to the doctor. Just be a politician. Yeah, I do hate a hit politician. And they've been going on to, like, cool songs. So, like, they walk off walk to, like, Florence music. and the Machine, like, walk-on music, yeah. Oh, that is tr it's what, so like a boxer stepping into the ring? Yes. And they like walk off to like the Maccabees and stuff. It's like, what? The Stop. Which the really they should walk on to. Well, surprisingly, that's not in our top three. The Labour Party held their annual conference in Liverpool this week. Ed Miliband has admitted to some of the mistakes the Labour Party made when Gordon Brown was leader. Mainly that they had Gordon Brown as leader. <laughs> Uh, one more thing to get fingers on buzzers. I think it's that footballer, Tevez. Am I saying his name right? Yeah. yeah. What about the footballer, well, Tevez? He... I don't... I really don't know anything about football, but I think he's You don't really need to say that twice. He's really expensive, <laughs> and he refused to go on and some big match. And there was some sort of row, and you saw him being like, well, I'm not going on. Which I kind of liked, so the kind of thought of, like, an obnoxious... Because I love an obnoxious pop star. You know, like... It's the sort of thing that Axel Rose wait. would do. Yeah, I love that, like, not going on yet. Axel Rose shouldn't have to go on because he's not a footballer, so... It's <laughs> <laughs> a good point well made, Sarah. I can't argue with that. You're on £200,000 a week and your boss says, you won't do half hour for us, would you? Yeah, exactly. You can't really go, no, I don't want to today. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not really asking. Can you go and definitely do I don't see why he's still here. He's been in the country four years and he wants to leave. That's his big thing. He didn't want to play because... I don't want to be in the country, I want to go home. I can't speak any English. I've been here four years. The only word he's got to learn is, like, kick, goal. <laughs> like, the Spanish for goal is goal. The Spanish for football is football. Like, it's not like we're asking him to learn Sanskrit. He <laughs> also said it was a miscommunication, didn't he? He said it... Because what, what he actually said was, OK, boss, where do you want to play? But because of his accent, it came out like, um, I fucking hate Man City. <laughs> You can piss off, shove it up your ass, you piece of shit. <laughs> That's an accent thing. Yeah. It's, yeah. Just, uh, it's just a dialect. Well, because he's from, it's from the what Catalan region. What he actually region. said was, que? <laughs> <laughs> Do we know why he didn't go up? Like, why he just refused? Was what? it just, had he just realised that football's a bit shit? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, love. <laughs> just, just one like Fucking yes! <laughs> Finally, someone said it! <laughs> if you look at Tevez, he's a very unfortunate-looking chap, isn't he? He does. He looks like Shrek's ugly mate, doesn't he? <laughs> I, 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 I refute that. Let's have a look. He's a great-looking guy. <laughs> In fairness to him, that was a very sunny day. <laughs> The flash is too strong. <laughs> I like it. It's too strong. It's just well, he didn't go on, to be honest, cos in that picture I can see he's already broken pretty much the rule of football. <laughs> <laughs> this is good, you see? I scored a goal! <laughs> he's attention-seeking, isn't he? Let's face it, if you're gonna... If you're gonna go to a football match and sit on the subspace, you're probably going to go on, let's face it, you've got to do that. And then he just says no, he's obviously an attention seeker. You, you think he's an attention seeker? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's of 
obviously an attention seeker. <laughs> the most attention-seeking sort of thing I've ever bloody seen. <laughs> that, my friend, is how you get attention. <laughs> Let's have a look and see whether Carlos Tevez is one of the most talked about people this week. Tevez was told he'd never play for Man City again after refusing to go on as a sub. Carlos Tevez earns quarter of a million pounds a week. To put that in terms the layman will understand, fucking hell. <laughs> At the end of that round, Sean, Joe and Ollie have one point. John, Nick and Sarah are in the lead with two. <laughs> Our next round is Pick of the Polls. Sean, Joe and Ollie, what do you like the look of? Can I have an old woman punch in the air, please? I agree. <laughs> Here is a clip to illustrate your question. Like the sort of thing that would be on a dispatches documentary. Yeah. <laughs> Followed by <laughs> Ethel didn't want to be in a home. <laughs> <laughs> they have closed down that choir. <laughs> I've got a weird thing about older women recently. Have you? Yeah. Like a bit of granny fanny, do I you? Know, well... <laughs> That I, I, my genuine celebrity crush when someone asked me the other day is Joanna Lumley, like quite honestly. And then last night it was an event, and a woman actually walked past me looking like Joanna Lumley, and I gave her the kind of thing, oh. and I was like, What am I doing? This woman's probably 80. Well, he had a stroke <laughs> next door. But I don't know what. <laughs> okay, so the question In a poll to find the best thing about retirement, taking up new hobbies came second. What came first? So, what's the best thing about retirement? Is it finding out? What your dog does all day long. <laughs> at work, I imagine people have got a dog, they think, what's he doing in now? <laughs> you're retired, you go, oh, he sits over there. <laughs> he, yeah, he goes over there for a bit. <laughs> <laughs> and then he goes up the stairs, <laughs> pines at my bedroom door, then comes right down there. I'll definitely pretend to forget my relatives. Oh, yeah, that's <laughs> I don't know who you are. <laughs> you might as well leave. Yeah. <laughs> Don't carry on watching the telly. Thank God they've gone. The train journey to Switzerland. Lovely <laughs> 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 scenery. Lovely <laughs> scenery. That's the last time I used Eurostar, but I told my nan we were going to Euro Disney. <laughs> I'm just going to do all the things I do now, but not get the piss taken out of me for them. <laughs> right. I'm going to tuck things in, I'm going to pull my trousers up, I'm going to buy slippers. <laughs> I bought a pair of slippers last week, and, you know, at my age, you have to make an ironic... <laughs> just... Uh, wacky, just, you know, it's just a joke, really. <laughs> just, I want to wear slippers in my house. <laughs> really soft on the inside, and, uh, sliding into a slipper. <laughs> Sorry, you mean a sliding into a slipper noise? Ah. <laughs> that should be a lady. What are you putting in the slipper? If you've got... <laughs> <laughs> if you've got the right slipper, you don't need a woman. That's what I'm going to say. I think eating. I think my gran was a big eater, just never store and not eating. You know, they love listing who's dead. Oh, that's their best thing oh, ever, Oh, that's yeah. like their favourite thing. All excited that Janet's dead <laughs> and they've outlasted Janet. <laughs> people, people you don't know. Yeah. yeah. Do you know Elsie? You no. know her mum? Whoa, whoa, yeah. whoa, whoa, whoa. OK. My yeah, nan, not Elsie. My nan's called Elsie. No, so Elsie's all right. I can't believe they found you first. <laughs> <laughs> I've got some really terrible news. Ollie is your new granddad. <laughs> Like your first reaction when you found out I was your grandson was to give me a pervy wink. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, so Beth, you've been the closest so far, Sean, uh, with your trip to Switzerland. 
Is it holidays? I'll give you that. <laughs> the best thing about the time is time to travel the world. Of course, once you've retired, you can go anywhere. Down to the post office, to the bingo, to the post office, then maybe the bingo, or even the bingo, and then the post office. <laughs> <laughs> and the winner is, is the name of our final round. Here is your question. Best way to spot a liar? Big right. wooden nose. Are his pants on fire? So his, pan, his pants are not on fire. He does not have a big wooden nose. What is the best way to spot a liar? I can, I can always tell if someone's lying if they go, right, Joe, you look well. <laughs> I don't know about looking well. You look like everyone from Guess Who. <laughs> <laughs> is, is there an actual truth serum, or is that like a Harry Potter thing? Is there a, is, is that, can you actually, like, is there a serum? Like, is it Yeah, like, it's called Bacardi. No, not even... <laughs> What's that, Lambrini? <laughs> <laughs> That's gone up in price recently. Uh. <laughs> What's gone up in price? It, has, it used to be 89p, and I think it's about £2.30 now. Most people know the price of milk. <laughs> <laughs> is it if they give you flowers afterwards? <laughs> <laughs> she was just a girl from the office. Oh, please. <laughs> go, I think if you go to a pub, two days running and the same man is sat in the same chair at the bar, he's definitely full of shit. Any man who ever tells you had trials for, insert name of football club. <laughs> Every man over 50 has had trials at a football <laughs> club and it's as if in the 50s they all just went, let's try everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Get everyone in, someone will be brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's more about how they tell their story. Uh... <laughs> They come out like that and go, well, the other day. <laughs> like going to the oh. moon. Like a weird Is it voodoo. The loony, they go. Yeah, like a, like a voodoo priest. Yeah. That's how they talk. Yeah. It's like a funeral in New Orleans. I tell you a story. Is that how it's I think eye contact could be the answer, Jimmy. There's no way. <laughs> Is it when people give too much detail? It's not too much oh, detail. I'll, I'll tell you the answer. The best way to spot a liar is that they keep changing their story. We've all told lies. I was drunk, he was drunk, we were just having a laugh, I never touched it. It was his idea, I fell on it. I just wanted to know what it tasted like. <laughs> Nothing happened! I don't even know him! Stop going on about it. <laughs> well, that sound tells me it's the end of the round and the end of the show, which means the final scores are Sean, Joe and Ollie have two points. John, Sarah and Nick have two, which means it's a dead heat, everyone's a winner! <laughs> Thanks to all our panellists, our wonderful studio audience, and to all of you for watching at home. If you want more, tune in tomorrow night for 8 out of 10 cats uncut. That's it from us. Good night. is if you liked and subscribed i'm so needy i'm so sorry uh, and why not come and see me live and uh, the tickets are available at sarahmillican.co.uk put the kettle on and settle in